Uh, I would say that society believes that God is losing the war, that the church is weak, the church has lost its zeal to fight, that the church is weak and uh, inconsequential now in modern society. But folks, the Bible says that God is winning and he's going to win this war on every front. Hallelujah. Scripture says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, I would have soon subdued all their enemies. If you had just listened to me, if you had just called on me, if you would have acknowledged me, I would have defeated all of your enemies. That's a message for the United States of America. That's a message for this country who has ruled God out of its schools, ruled God out of its classrooms, ruled God out of its society. You can't even hang a religious picture in any public building now. You can't hang a, a, hang a picture or have a motto. You can't even wear a cross around your neck if you work in a prison. They have absolutely allowed, outlawed everything having to do with God. Our courts would rather see America die and go down in flames than to say that we need to trust in God. Hi, church. Bobby and I are filled with faith for our church and everything God has in store for, well, you, for your family, for our church, and of course, in our own lives. It's been an unexpected season and we're thankful for your awe and for the incredible sense of community we share. Hillsong Church apologizes after investigations find Brian Houston engaged in inappropriate behavior. Megachurch says Houston, who has stepped down as a leader of the church, breached his code of conduct. Charismatic, young, and fashionable leaders and celebrity attendees from Justin Bieber to Vanessa Hudgens to Chris Pratt. Not what you might expect from church on a Sunday, but it's why Hillsong has grown into one of the most influential mega churches in the world and one of the most controversial. You know who's going to give you peace? It's going to be the expert. His name is Jesus. Its popularity exploded in the U.S. with the high profile of the, quote, celebrity pastor, Carl Lentz, whose recent downfall has triggered a wave of scandals for the church Brian Houston created in Australia more than 30 years ago. What has this season in the church been like for you? I think it's been difficult, clearly, because a lot of disappointment in some of the things that have emerged. Get your mind right. There's hope for you yet. Lentz founded the East Coast branch of Hillsong in 2010, drawing stars in like Justin Bieber, who Lentz baptized in an NBA player's bathtub. But it all came crashing down last fall when Lentz was fired and admitted to an affair, writing on social media, I am deeply sorry for breaking the trust of many people. A woman who says she was his mistress speaking soon after. Hillsong has been forced to apologize unservedly after the church founder, Brian Houston, was found to have engaged in conduct of serious concern by the church. Following the media reports on Friday, the church's global board said in a statement that Houston had breached Hillsong's pastor code of conduct in two incidents over the past decade. We have sadly been dealing with two complaints made against Pastor Brian over the past 10 years, the church global board said. The board said the first incident occurred approximately a decade ago in which inappropriate text messages from Houston were sent to a staff member, which subsequently resulted in the, in the employee resigning. At the time, Pastor Brian was under the influence of sleeping tablets upon which he had developed a dependence, the statement said. Uh, the board said, it worked with Pastor Brian to ensure he received professional help to eliminate the dependency on the medication and was achieved, and, and was achieved successfully. The second investigation concerned a complaint the church received in 2019 about a behavior which Hillsong attributed to medication and alcohol. Following an in-depth investigation, it was found that Pastor Brian became disoriented after a session at the Hillsong Conference following the consumption of anti-anxiety medication beyond the prescribed dose. A double board statement said this resulted in him knocking on the door of the hotel room that was not his, entering the room and spending time with the female occupant. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. I feel like I'm in, in trouble almost with the way my... Really? You're in trouble? No, I'm good now. 
<laughs> Here we go. Thanks for having me. This is all- Five months ago, they began what she calls a consensual affair, in spite of what she thought were red flags, including him telling her not to Google him, saving her number in the Notes app instead of his contact list, and refusing to tell her his last name or what he did for a living despite regularly posting photos of himself online with Hollywood elite and NBA stars, something she says she didn't know at first. He's like, you know, I work for big celebrities, and I say, what do you exactly you do? And he keeps saying, um, I manage celebrities, and I travel with them. He didn't want to say what he does. Did you think that was a red flag? He, he won't give you his last name? Yeah, he was. Because, I don't know, it was really strange. Kareem says she searched online and found out more about him. I realized that he's the pastor from Hillsong, and I was like, oh, I was at this church like six years ago. You had been to Hillsong? One time. You better check yourself. Frank Houston was a Pentecostal pastor in the Assemblies of God in New Zealand and Australia. Frank Houston founded Sydney Christian Life Center, which would eventually become under the leadership of his son, Pastor Brian Houston, before merging into Hillsong Church. It was founded by the telegenic and usually talkative Brian Houston, but he didn't want anything to do with this story. And that's because it's about evil the most unchristian behavior imaginable, and his father, Frank Houston. He too was a high profile church leader, but used his position and influence to abuse children. So is that Frank? That's uh, Frank Houston. Is that how you remember him? During his visits to Australia, he would stay with the Senstocks, and night after night, he would sneak into seven-year-old Brett's bedroom to sexually abuse him. We believe evangelism is about doing anything necessary to get a person to repeat after us and to get into the waters of baptism. Newsflash, parable of the soils, there's four soils. Three of them spring up, only one of them bears fruit. That means over 66% of those who look like something happened didn't. Do any other false teachers preach in their pulpits? Yes. Hillsong has been the host to practically every well-known false teacher that uh, soils the landscape of evangel- evangelicalism today. Uh, they endorse everyone. Bill Johnson has spoken there numerous times recently. Uh, Bill Johnson, you name it. Uh, they endorse Kenneth Copeland. They endorse Joel Osteen. They endorse Benny Hinn. Uh, all Hillsong. of them. Hillsong does, yes, okay. absolutely. Yes, Hillsong does teach this this health and wealth prosperity gospel. Bethel does as well, and a lot of people don't realize this, but just in the last few weeks, I've watched some of their services live streaming. I want to read to you, Todd. This is their their declaration. They, they read this right before the offering is taken. He began by saying, nothing happens in the kingdom until we first declare something. This is the positive confession doctrine. You speak things into existence. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, 
interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. They had the whole church, they, they, the whole church recites this right before they take the offering. Imagine a king, he has a bride that he loves with all his heart, all his heart. She's precious to him. Oh, he makes her eloquent, makes her beautiful, dresses her in the finest, purest, whitest linen. He loves her. He spends his day admiring her, but he has to go on a long, a long journey. So he calls you in as a steward. He calls you in as a steward. He grants you the privilege to care for his wife, and he carefully constructs a document before you. This is what I want you to do with my wife. This is what I want you to do with my wife. This is what I want you to do with my wife. But then what happens? The king goes on a long journey and he stays gone for a while. And you notice that the people are becoming disloyal to the king. You notice that they're no longer really attracted to the queen. She's so, I don't know. She's just not modern. She's not, she's not what the people want today. So you get a great idea. You strip her of her white linens. You paint her face and dress her like a prostitute. And you, you parade her before carnal men in order to draw them back into loyalty with the king. When the king returns, what will he do with you? He will kill you. And that's exactly what many pastors are doing today. That's exactly what many church planters are doing today. They're dressing up the church so that she will be pleasing not to godly folk, but to carnal folk in hopes of bringing them back into the kingdom. The king never gave you such a decree. Never. She belongs to him.